Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So the other day I realized that most of my channel is related to Lightroom editing tutorials, but I've never done a basic Lightroom editing tutorial. So that is exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm not going to make this intro too long and just jump straight into the video. Alright, so just jumping onto my laptop, I'm going to be starting from the very beginning of importing your photos to your computer. So after you've taken it off your camera, I've just created a folder for the tutorial of a few photos that I've taken that I'll be using for the tutorial. So that is on my desktop. What I'm going to do is go ahead and open Lightroom. Okay, so once we have Lightroom open, you will see that it opens on the main library window. So obviously I already have an entire library of about 36,000 photos already. But what we're going to do is add another folder to this library and hit the plus tool over there, click on add add folder and then you should go to your desktop click on Lightroom editing tutorial click choose and then it's going to bring up your import window now you don't really need to change much of these settings from here you can just click straight import and this will bring this into your library now you see it put you in the previous import tab over here you can also find this folder by going to your folder section in the desktop and then Lightroom editing tutorial so in the library mode this is just a very basic overview of your photos pretty much you can adjust basic settings on the right over here but for the most part we're going to be working in the develop module to further refine the photos so over here you can choose all the different files that you have obviously I have tons and tons of different missions and files and everything so all of the photos are over here and this is where you come select the photo and then go into the develop mode what you can do as well if you like you can turn on filters to filter the different photos by certain categories if you have tons of photos so I'm just gonna go ahead and head over to the develop module so we can jump straight into the editing part of this tutorial so in the develop tab we can see that we have the presets the snapshots the history and the collections in the left hand side of the window on the right we can see all the editing tools that we need for editing the photo and making it look cool we have the menu bar at the top as is standard with all the different modules and then at the bottom we have a nice overview window of the entire reel of photos that we have but first off I'm just going to start by explaining what is going on in all of these tabs so on the left hand side we can see that we have the tab called presets now basically what a preset is is an existing set of settings that that you have already applied to a photo and saved to apply those same settings to a different photo so as you saw earlier I have so many photos so I've created a lot of presets during my time of editing so I'm just going to show you what a preset does quickly so for this tutorial I'm just going to be working with this photo for now and what I'm going to do is apply one of my presets which is AS1 and we can see how it just applies all the predetermined settings already to the photo without us even doing anything so basically this is just a great time saver if you're editing a lot of photos and you don't have to keep changing the settings every single time but I'll get more into the presets a bit later and how to save them and how to apply them to other photos and all that kind of stuff so for now I'm just gonna hit reset and continue on explaining what the other tabs do the snapshots is really cool if you okay say for example you apply the AS1 preset you're like oh that looks really cool but I'm not sure if I want to have that just yet you can click on snapshots uh, save that whatever snapshot you want I'm just gonna say snapshot one uh, you can just leave it at the date if you want to hit create and it'll save a snapshot of those existing settings so if you want to mess around and play with the settings and do what you want to do then you can save another snapshot I'm just gonna save it just as that for now and you can compare the two by going between and not lose the settings that you had on your original edit so the snapshots are pretty cool up next we have the history and basically the history just shows you every single step that you've taken in order to get to where you are with the picture right now so say for example i want to go back and cancel all of these instead of pressing undo all the time you can just go back and click the setting that you changed and remove all the settings above that next we have the collections tab to be honest i really don't use this but you can sort your photos into different collections essentially um, by rating them in colors and to do this you hit the key six to nine on your keyboard so six would be red seven would be yellow eight would be green and nine would be blue and then to remove it you just hit the key again and it will remove the color tag and just like the colors as well you can sort them into different star ratings by hitting one star two star three star four star 
or five star. And if you want to set it back to not, you just hit zero. You can also see that it's sorted into the past month, recently modified video files and photos without keywords. So you can use that to your liking. It's pretty much just a better sorting method than having them all in one place. Just one thing I forgot, at the top here, we have the different zoom settings. So at the moment set to fit, and this fits the picture on the screen, obviously. We can click fill, and this will fill the picture on the screen. If we click on one to one, it'll just zoom in one to one, and three to one, it'll make it more zoomed in, and you can adjust all the different zoom settings over here to zoom in to your liking, however close you wanna to go to the picture, so you can look into somebody's window if you want to. I usually like to keep it around three to one, but obviously it just depends on what photo you're working on and how detailed you need to work. And then obviously, as you can see here, it shows you a preview of the photo so also if you go to different presets you can see how the preset will affect the photo by just hovering over the presets so that's pretty useful as well instead of changing the photo before you see how it's going to look going on to this little tab at the bottom over here we see that we have the main window to view the entire picture and then we also have the split y y kind of thing over here and what this does is show you the before and after of the picture you can also just hit y on your keyboard to bring up that view as a shortcut and then if you click on this button over here it'll just switch the photos around whichever way you want to see it as you can see by this button it copies the after settings to the before and this one copies the before settings to the after so it'll copy the settings from this photo to that one or this photo to that one what you can also do is change how you see the before and after so if you click on this arrow over here it'll give you different options to see how you see the before and after. So splitting it in half, splitting it in the top and bottom, or splitting the actual image in the top and bottom as well. And then again, you can just hit Y to change up the different things. You can also hold in shift and click Y and it'll change that accordingly as well. The soft proofing tab, basically what this does is allows you to make edits without it affecting the photo immediately. Moving on to the bottom section over here, as I've said already, that's just shows a preview of your photos and you can drag it up and down to scale it as well. This little square button over here will take you back to the preview of the library. These arrows over here just help you move through the different modules, but I think it's easier just to click at the top here or use the keyboard shortcuts D for develop and for some reason G is for library. Next to that we have the folder name and here you can just select the different folders that you want to edit as well. And then if we move over to the right here we have the different filter settings, we have the flag so you can just click on the image and choose which filter you want to give it so you can flag the image you can use a star and you can use colors as well and then you can also go ahead and filter these images so say for example I want to set this at a two star rating and I want to set this one at a two star rating and maybe I want to set this one at a one star rating so what I can do now is to show all the pictures that are one star and above I can click on the one star and it'll sort that into a nice organized folder for me I use this quite a lot when I edit just to exclude all the unnecessary photos that you don't necessarily want to edit in more detail obviously you can also click on this to say greater than less than or equal to so if I say equal to then obviously it'll only show me the one star photos for now though I'm gonna leave that off and just going back to the original photo I'm gonna click reset and that'll just reset the photo to all the base settings okay so now jumping into the actual editing of the photo we're going to start off with the white balance and this is just the balance between the temperature and the tint of your photo basically so i usually just keep it on as shots because the camera does a pretty good job of picking the white balance up but if your photo is a bit off for some reason you can click on this little color picker here and choose the section that you think is the whitest part of your photo so i think that i'm going to choose maybe the cloud over here that looks pretty white click on that we see that it's made it a bit blue now I kind of disagree with that I don't think that the photo needs to be that blue so you can go ahead and warm up the photo but on the temperature it also looks a bit green so I'm gonna bring the tint over to the more magenta side I mean that's pretty much what we had but I think that looks more natural than what the color picker has given us so I'm just gonna leave that where it is so obviously we are working in the color spectrum now you can also click on black and white and then it only gives you settings to change the black and white parts of the photo we're gonna work in color though obviously um, up next we have the basic tab which gives you all the highlights, shadows, blacks, whites, pretty much just the basic editing tools of your photos, the stuff that you can find on your iPhone editing apps and Instagram editing and stuff like that. So if you want you can just click on auto and it'll give you what 
the computer thinks is a nice balanced image but obviously we can see that it's a bit overexposed and not really to what we want to achieve with this photo so i'm going to hit undo which is command z and i'm going to start off by bringing up the contrast just to give some nice pop in the photo i'm going to bring down the highlights just to retain the detail in the clouds maybe bring up the shadows a bit to see what's going on there and i'm going to leave the whites where they are maybe just bring the blacks down a little bit just to keep some of the actual blackness in it and not make it like so faded so i'm going to keep that like that the clarity i'm going to leave it where it is now i like the dreaminess of this photo basically what the clarity does is it like makes the photo more detailed and more contrasty in certain areas so we can see if we look at the city there for example or the edge of the clouds here how it affects that if we change the clarity it also makes it like really dreamy and lucid if we bring it all the way down but that's not really what we're going for so what the vibrance does is it basically saturates the colors that are the most desaturated so if we look at this photo we can see that the blues are probably the most desaturated in comparison to the pinkish orange colors that we have here so if we bring up the vibrance it should bring up the blue saturation a bit so yeah we can see that it's looking pretty nice over there the the saturation of the photo brings up the saturation of the entire photo obviously so all the colors will become more saturated or desaturated if we bring it down for this photo i think that i'm going to bring it up to about eight that looks pretty cool the tone curve this is a very important part of editing photos and getting away from that basic kind of look that everybody can get this is where photos come alive and people really bring out their styles in their work so i've got it set to the point editor right now but i'm just going to go click on that bottom right button over there to bring you to the view that you would probably see on your tone curve now this just makes it easier and more simple for you guys to edit so you can bring up the highlights and this will just affect the tone curve so we can see by playing with these settings where the different things affect the tone curve so we see that the highlights are based at the top over here so if you bring that up the highlights are going to go up if you bring that down obviously the highlights are going to go down likewise with the darks and the shadows we can see that if we bring that down that's going to affect the lower end of the tone curve and then you can also if you want to to make it even simpler for you you can click on the point curve here and choose a preset that Lightroom has already given us so you can either click on linear which it is right now medium contrast which makes a little very small s curve or you can click on strong contrast and it'll make it a bit more than that but what I like to do is just keep it on linear for now and click on the point curve editor which is this bottom right corner over here and then from here you can edit the RBG channel directly so I like to create a basic S curve from the start, just dropping some points on the line. If you just click on it, it'll drop points. Um, and this is just to keep the middle part where it is and not move the whole thing. So I like to bring up the fade of my photos quite a bit and then just drop the shadows down and then bring up the highlights to create a nice S curve. I like doing that most of the time and then bringing down the highlights just a bit to fade it out so it doesn't blend into the white background. I don't think I'm going to mess with this too much right now. I think the photo is looking pretty good already but just going into more advanced technical of Lightroom you can go into the individual RBG channels and edit these to change the colors and the tone curve of each channel and here you can get pretty creative and create some very cool colors as you can see i'm just going to leave this all at linear for now because i don't think we need to mess with this too much but a lot of film presets and a lot of colorful vibrant presets love to play around with the individual channels so we are done with the tone curve so i'm going to close that i'm also going to close the basic for now just because we're done with that next we have the hsl tab now this is where you change the hue saturation and luminance of your colors hence why it's called hsl so if we start with the hue this is basically just to change the colors that you have already so just to show you an example we have some blues in the picture so you can go to the blue and drag this all the way into the aqua and we can see how it affects the blues in the picture likewise we have some pinks in the picture so that's more of the magenta purplish even red kind of color so i'm going to go with magenta for now and we can see if we drag this how it changes the colors in the clouds and this is how you can also get really creative with your colors and just create worlds that are pretty magical i would say so i'm going to get pretty creative creative as well and just leave this color tone where it is for now going into the saturation as most of you probably know saturation just brings up the brightness i guess of your colors brings up the saturation so the blues we can bring that all the way up if you want to make it like that so i'm not going to make it like that for now i am actually just going to bring the blues down a little bit into about minus 10 i think that looks good and i'm going to bring the magentas 
up a little bit. Again, you can just mess around with all of this according to your liking and how you want to edit photos. I'm just having some fun now in light of the tutorial. Up next is the luminance and this is basically how dark or how light your certain colors are. So again, we'll work with the blues and the magentas and purples. So if we bring up the blues, we can see that it makes either very light or very dark. For this photo, I'm going to bring it up just a little bit because I want to get that nice like dreamy light kind of look and then for the magentas as well also just going to bring it up a little bit and not most of it too much again you can just change this to your liking just another tip this, there is this little tool over here and this can basically change the settings by clicking on a color and just dragging up and down so i'm going to show you what i mean by this by using it with the hue that's probably just the clearest example i can do so if you click on that and you go over to your photo and i'm just going to work with the blues for now if you click down and then drag all the way up you can see how it changes it to a different hue or if you drag all the way down it changes the colors as well so you can do it this way if you'd like to get the right balance instead of changing each color hue one by one this changes the overall tone of that color so again we can try it on the clouds and it'll change like most of the color tone of the clouds so that's cool and then you can click done in the bottom right corner there and i think we can move on to the next tab oh also you can click on the color over here if you just like to work with individual colors instead of seeing all of them at the same time and you can also just click all if you want to see the hue saturation and luminance at the same time but yeah like i said i actually like to work in the color the most just because you can work with individual colors and not get distracted by all the things at the same time and moving on to split toning so what split toning does is it puts a certain color in the highlights and a certain color in the shadows and then you can balance that out to your liking as well so you can do this by bringing up the hue and just looking at the color spectrum that is given you and you can bring up the saturation as well or you can click on this little block over here and it brings up a nice color palette for you to choose a bit more accurately so in the highlights i think i want to go with a nice pinkish kind of color so i'm going to go over to the pink section over here and just use the eyedropper tool to pick a color and then choose the saturation and the saturation will just move it up and down on the color spectrum lightroom also gives you this presets palette at the top here to give you certain colors that work well with most photos and the highlights and shadows so you can click on that if you don't want to go through the process of choosing a specific color i do this quite often and just choose light blue for a lot of my photos but for this tutorial though i'm going to keep it with the pink that i had and just click undo in the shadows i think that i want to go with a nice dark blue kind of color so i'm going to go over to this range maybe keep it in about 20 and hit close and then yeah that looks pretty good uh what the balance does is it obviously balances out between how much of the split toning you want of the shadows or the highlights so obviously if you go all the way over to the right it's going to make the highlights much more of a priority than if you bring it all the way to the left where it brings the shadow color into the photo a lot more i am just going to leave this on although i don't think we need to mess with the balance too much it looks pretty good to me up next is the detail tab and this basically just affects the sharpening of your photo so it should give you the basic settings that it shows over here already and then you can mess around with this and bring up the sharpening to your liking as well i don't really bring it up all the way i know a lot of people do and it makes the photo really crisp but it can also like destroy your photo and make it not look that natural or smooth or anything as well so i try and keep it between i would say 60 and 20 is the range i like to keep it in depending on how sharp the actual shot is that you took the radius just affects okay i'm gonna put this on full so you can see what's happening so if we look on this tab over here we can see the little dots how it kind of makes it sharper so the radius is obviously how big or small that dot is and if we bring that all the way down it's a lot finer of a sharpened um let's think of it like a pencil if you're sharpening a pencil and the dots that it can make with that pencil the detail if we bring that all the way up it'll just make like a lot more dots but it'll also create a lot more noise in your photo and if we bring that all the way down it's just like less dots that you're making with your pencil the masking kind of smoothens that out a bit so if you do want to go overboard with the sharp I mean you can if you want to uh, just use the masking to kind of drop the noise of that but then you can also just do this through the noise reduction which is the luminance I don't know why the luminance is called the luminance and in the color thing it's also luminance I don't know but basically what this does is smoothens it out a bit so if we put this on full it'll kind of make it look like a painting as you can see there like one of those really cheap ugly filters that some people use on Instagram to smooth out their skin that is what the luminance does um, and again the detail will e either make it a lot like sharper or a lot smoother and we can see uh, how it affects the the picture it really looks i don't know 
just fluffy and like no detail at all so i'm not gonna I'm not going to use this, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to leave that on naught and leave some detail in the picture that we have already. Moving on to the lens corrections, now this is basically just to fix any distortions that someone might have in their lenses, so if you enable this it'll, it does a very small adjustment but it basically just removes any vignetting that your lens might create. So you can click on enable profile corrections and that'll do that, you can also click on all the other things to apply the other settings. If light room is not picking up your lens you can go over to the profile section choose the make of your camera choose the model and basically just choose the lens and how you want Lightroom to correct that for you so you can mess around with this I don't really mess around with it too much but obviously some lenses will have more distortion than others moving on to the effects now in the effects we find the vignetting and the grain so vignetting is basically putting a nice gothic black shadows around your picture we that's not the look that we're going for so we're not going to do that um but if you bring that into the negative obviously it brings darkness into your photo if you bring it into the positive it makes a white vignette i don't know who uses a white vignette but i guess some people do because it's there um, and then what you can do with this is affect all the other stuff affect the midpoint how much you want the vignette to come in the roundness of it and also the feather which is basically like how much it fades in or not so if we put that on naught obviously it's just going to be like a round circle but if we bring it all the way up it's nice and like I don't know, it's just better, you can't really notice it that much. The grain, this is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just gonna put it on full just so I can show you what's happening with the settings over here. So the grain is to bring in kind of like a film look to your photos. Don't put it on 100, please. 100, it's just a bit much, I think. <laughs> the size of your grain, this, again, think of it like a pencil. The size is increasing the size of the dots that you make. The roughness will just add more of those dots. And if we go over to the roughness, if we bring that all the way up, it just doesn't really make it like a smooth dot. It makes it a rough dot. If we bring that down, it makes it more of a smooth dot. So you can see that in the picture over there. If we bring up the roughness, crazy dots all over the place. Don't know what's happening. So I'm gonna keep that kind of where it was, bring the grain down. Um, I think we can use a little bit for this photo. Again, it just brings in more of a texture to the photo and gives it a sort of feel, I would say. So just because this is a landscape, I'm not gonna bring it up too much. Grain works a lot better with portraits and kind of lifestyle shots. So that is the effects tab. And if we go to the camera calibration, again, this is to correct your camera's colors, but you can take advantage of this and use it to bring out certain tones that maybe aren't even in your picture. So that's pretty cool. So we have the shadows, the red primary, the green primary, and the blue. And if I just go ahead and show you what happens if I adjust the hue, we can see that it makes it more like focused on certain colors, I would say. So if we bring the blue hue all the way to the left, it focuses and turns the colors into only like a blue and a pinkish orangey kind of color similarly with the red and the green you can change this to your liking and just you can have some fun with this you can do whatever you want again this is all like color play and how you like to edit your photos i'm gonna keep that like that and the greens don't know if i want to change that too much maybe over there and also you can play with the saturation and yeah this is all pretty much just up to you and that is all the settings what's up here is the crop tool and this is basically just to crop your photos you can click on the aspect ratio uh whatever you want so if you want to go for instagram click on one to one make sure that it's on lock so if you drag this in and out it stays locked hit enter and it'll crop it into a square what else do we have here? Say for example, the horizon is skew. Okay, this isn't the horizon line here, but just say for instance that it is. You can either drag the slider to change the angle, or what I find is a lot easier, and I'm actually gonna use it as an example on this picture where I think the horizon is skew. So click on the crop tool, and then go ahead and click on this little ruler over here. And what you can do is just drag a line over the horizon, and let that go and it'll make it perfectly straight and then hit enter and there we go we have a straight horizon which is the best thing with photos it's just so annoying when people don't straighten their horizon and their photos just look like this and they're posted on instagram like yes i understand it's art but still yeah going back to this photo so this tool over here is the spot removal tool and say for example we don't want this boat in the photo so you can bring up the size of the brush click on the boat and it should use another patch of the photo to overlay that on top of the boat and just pretty much cover it up. This can be used for like 
portraits and stuff where say for example somebody has a pimple or whatever say for example like it just showed you you don't want the boat in the picture for some reason i think it adds character but but you might not want it there next is the red eye tool okay i don't have any red eyes in this photo but this is if you have a portrait and you have a red eye so you can just click this tool on the eye and it will remove the red eye next is the graduated filter and this is one of my favorite things to use a lot of people don't use this but i find it really cool and really effective to use in your photos so what this does is basically just drags like a linear filter over your photos so you can apply it to wherever you want so what it does is that it'll apply certain settings to one side of that filter and then fade it out depending on how long this gap is over here so you can bring that in closer and have less of a fade if you want to and i'm going to show you what this does over here so if i bring down the exposure you can see how it affects the top of this filter and you can flip this around and do whatever you want with it uh what you could do as well is mess around with the colors leave the exposure on naught and change the temperature and this will kind of give you funky colors as well um, but if you don't want to do that you can also go and add certain colors to this image so say for example i want more red in the bottom left corner of this picture you can click on the red and it'll apply red to the photo and then again this is all just like the basic settings and you can do whatever you want to apply certain settings to a certain part of the photo next is the radial filter and this is pretty much the same thing just in a circle so if you want the middle of the circle to be a bit more clear so you can bring up the clarity a bit and i'll just make the center of the photo more clear i like to use this a lot for portraits where you can put it on people's faces and just make that stand out from the rest of the photo you can also click on inverts and this will affect the outside rather than the inside but for this photo i'm going to leave it on the inside and then lastly we have the brush tool which is again the same thing just in a brush form so say for example i want the ocean to be more of a turquoise teal kind of color than the color it is already you can brush over the ocean and hit the color spectrum click on the turquoise over here and you can see how it changes the ocean obviously that's a bit too saturated but you can do this to your liking again and there we go that is how to edit um, if you want to save this as a preset and apply it to other photos i'm going to just take the graduated and radial filters off quick so we don't have this on so you can click on it and just hit delete uh, go to radial filter hit on the middle thing there hit delete and the brush just gonna delete that as well so you can click on the plus tool over here i'm just going to save this in the user presets folder for now i'm going to call this lightroom tut and then what we have here is what settings you want to save from this photo that you've just created so i like to save all of them usually excluding the white balance the exposure the graduated filters and the radial filters this is just because each photo will have a different exposure a different white balance and a different composition so you can't really apply radial and graduated filters to all of your photos unless it's like a really general one so i'm going to leave all this how it is for now click on create and this will pop up in your user presets tab as lightroom touch so now if you go to a different photo and go click on lightroom touch it'll apply all of the settings that we just made onto this photo so that looks really cool i really like that actually we can just see that it's a bit dark so i'm going to go to the basic settings and just bring up the exposure of this picture um, what you can also do is just hit the plus and minus keys on your keyboard to bring that up that looks really cool i really like this preset so that looks cool obviously you can't just apply the preset and expect it to be perfect on every single photo so you have to adjust the settings accordingly so i would also just bring up the shadows a bit in this picture because the shadows look quite dark maybe to about there and yeah that looks really cool i like that so that is how you edit on lightroom and then just to show you a bit more of the power that lightroom can have you can get really crazy and creative with how you do your edits and I've created some pretty cool presets over here that will be going on sale very soon um, that just alter the color and look and feel of your photos quite dramatically and it's pretty cool to see what you can do with the different settings and editing styles and just everything so you can get really creative lightroom is an extremely powerful tool you can have fun and just go crazy so you can apply really colorful presets like this you can also go and apply a nice like filmy kind of presets to it you can do whatever you want you can create whatever kind of look you want everything that you've seen in any image ever you can pretty much create in lightroom what we're going to do now is show you how to export this photo 
you can go over to the first one that we've been editing right click on the photo go over to export click on export and this is just going to bring up where would you like to export the photo to so you can choose specific folder folder for later use or the same folder as where the original photo came from i'm just going to leave it on a specific folder for now because it's already selected as the desktop so i'm going to save that to the desktop um, if you want to put it in a subfolder you can so you can call it lightroom edits if you'd like to rename the file there's also a bunch of options here that you can choose what you want to do so you can click on like custom name or something and go lightroom and then i'll say one of one and you can choose the start number how you want to call it so this is quite nice if you're exporting stuff for clients and you don't want to just give them a whole bunch of file names so that they can actually see what's going on with the photos and how much they are file settings i export my pictures to jpeg at 100 quality the color space on srgb image sizing we're not going to change that we're not going to sharpen for output the metadata you can choose Choose what you want to do with that as well watermarking if you'd like to put a watermark on you can click on that and add the watermark that you want to i've got my own watermark set already but i'm not going to put it on this photo and post processing we don't need to do anything with that but you can choose all of this stuff as you like as well from there click on export and it should export your file and then if we go over to the desktop we'll see that we have a folder called lightroom edits and our photo will be in there and there we go from there you can sync this to your phone and upload it to instagram to get all of the likes so there we go that is going to end this basics of lightroom tutorial yeah this is quite a long video <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you have learned something as well that is the main goal of this video to just help you guys and bring more people into editing quality photos again just get creative with it bring in some new cool creative stuff to the world of photography and i hope to see you guys around on instagram please tag me in your photos if you've learned something from this i would really love to see them and interact with you guys as well if you have any suggestions for any other videos that you'd like to see please leave it down in the comments below and yeah if you'd like to check out some of my own photos come over to at visual rev on instagram and come say hi leave a comment with hashtag youtube squad and i'll definitely come check out your profile in saying that this video has been extremely long so i'm going to end it here again thank you guys so much for watching if you did like the video please leave a like if you are new around here hit the subscribe button in the meantime stay weird don't die and make it happen i'll see you guys in the next one Thank <laughs> you.